BNB, Binance Coin, made a huge move yesterday, up over 20%. I'm going to tell you why I think that's likely to continue and that we could see price targets as high as $600 in the very near future. I'm also going to review all the news that matters in the market today. You don't want to miss this. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that like button, that little thumbs up down below and help this video get more views. Now, like I said in the intro, we're going to take a look at Binance Coin BNB and see what's going on on the charts and why I continue to be bullish on both the Bitcoin and USD pairs. We're also going to review all of the news that matters. Let's dive directly into the charts now. You can check it out. First, let's look at BNB against USDT would be the same chart against USD. As you can see, it was ranging in this red range here, but more importantly, formed a bull pennant and yesterday on strong volume broke out from that pattern. A breakout of a bull pennant can be easily extrapolated for a target. There's two ways you can look at this. You could define the flagpole all the way down here, starting at $36. That's actually how I like it, uh, looking at this setup. And based on that, on a logarithmic chart, you take that length of the flagpole from the breakout and you get a target that's just at $600. Now, if you favor this smaller flagpole here that starts around $117, it gives us a target still over $519, which is more conservative. Now, what I love about this bull pennant, A, it's perfect, up, down, up, down, breakout. That's exactly what you want to see in a bull pennant, alternating touches, two to the top and two to the bottom. Further, we have the breakout on strong volume and a perfect retest so far today. That could off obviously change. We have a perfect retest literally to the penny of that resistance as support. This is exactly a textbook bull pennant breakout. So we'll be looking to see what that does. Also, as you can see, we have this red range that I discussed. Now, I really like this range because we have perfect action around the EQ here. The EQ is the equilibrium. It's that dash line, the 50% level of a range. Look how many times it was support. One, two, flipped all the way to the bottom of the range. Resistance, 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 resistance. That's five candles right there that all had bodies or wicks that topped out exactly at that line. Tons of support on that line. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Breakdown flip back exactly there and head up. I mean, this is a textbook, perfect bullish chart. So your very, very minimum target here, even with the flip of the EQ to support is about $340. Let's call it 350 is your first target. 516 is your second target. And the last target is 600. Now it's always important when you're trading a USDT pair to take a look at the Bitcoin pair as well, because often USDT pairs only go up because Bitcoin went up right? They're sort of riding the wave. Uh, rising tide lifts all boats. But if they're just riding the wave and doing worse than Bitcoin, you'd better be off. You'd be better off in Bitcoin. So let's look at the BNB Bitcoin pair, which is a setup I shared in the newsletter just a couple days ago, right before it broke out. So I'm pretty proud of this one. Again, you have this huge range right here. We're trading right around the EQ, right around the center. It broke above, now it's broken below, but I would say it's consolidating against that resistance right now. I would have liked to see it hold above. But more importantly, you have this red descending line, which is sort of telling you once again that it was in a downtrend and has now broken out of that downtrend. Not only that, it broke out, retested right into demand, and then exited on strong volume to break towards and above the EQ. That was the initial target of the trade. Now, if it can hold the EQ as support, we're looking at 0 0.065269 at the top of the range. I really like this setup. I think that BNB is going to do well. Pancake swap is very popular. It's given a deflationary aspect to Binance coin and also, you know, is giving a use case basically for gas fees. So I think that we will continue to see appreciation as long as the market holds in Binance coin. Now let's dive into all the news that's affecting the market. First, Tesla just helped patch a bug in this open source Bitcoin payment processor. I think this is so cool. Tesla not only showing a commitment to accepting payments from Bitcoin, but actually actively diving into the code, finding a bug and helping them to fix this. This was on BTC Pay server. Clearly, as it says here, there's a sign of its serious commitment to Bitcoin beyond holding it in its treasury and accepting it as payment. Also shows Bitcoin is one huge community. You know, it's open source. People can, people can uh, make improvements around it. And it really just shows what an incredible community we are a part of and that they are truly committed 
to being a bigger part of that community. Elon Musk, you are a giga chad, my friend. Next news, Michael Jordan joins $305 million investment in firm behind NBA Top Shot. He made a sizable investment into Dapper Labs, the buzzy NFT platform that has generated over $500 million in sales since launch, selling clips largely of B-rate basketball players dunking on people. I don't see how those will have a tremendous value down the road. Uh, but hey, I guess there's a uh, collection for everyone. This brings the valuation of NBA Top Shot to around $2.6 billion. And it wasn't just Michael Jordan. Look at this list. Michael Jordan, Kevin Durant, Andre Godala, Kyle Lowry, Spencer Dimwitty, Andre Drummond, Alex Caruso, blah, 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 blah. The list literally goes on endlessly. Everybody wants a piece of NFTs. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. When I was a kid... I was a huge baseball card collector. It's all I cared about in the world was collecting baseball cards. This was in the early to mid 80s, largely. I traded them. I bought them. I spent every single penny my, that I made, my allowance, my birthday money on baseball cards. And I used to buy up wax packs, you know, the little packs that you open physically in boxes. And I was going to save those boxes into the future. They were going to be my college fund. I saved them through college. They were going to become, you know, my, my retirement. I had hundreds of these boxes from the 1980s that were unopened. Well, let me tell you what happened. I took them into two baseball card stores a few years ago, and the people literally told me that they would pay me to take them outside and light them on fire and to get them out of their store. I had tens and tens of thousands of cards that were literally worthless because they had printed so many of them in the 1980s. Uh, Basically inflation for baseball cards, but I ended up taking them to a local uh, library and donating them for some kids that could open the cards for Fun. I think that uh, a lot of what we're seeing NFTs will have a very, very similar trajectory. Unfortunately, the cream will continue to rise to the top, but I do not view what is happening right now as sustainable, which is totally fine. Bubbles pop, the cream rises to the top, and the technology and the best artists and the best products will be the ones that have value. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe NFT uh, and NBA Top Shot will continue to be huge, but I personally just don't see it unless you're just flipping them right now because the market's hot and that I can totally get behind as a trader. In the next piece of news, the CME is launching micro Bitcoin futures in May. Now, everybody knows about the notorious launch in December 2017 of the main Bitcoin futures product because that was the dead top of The market now, only institutional investors and large investors have had access to that because it's been prohibitive as far as size and access. Well, now the micro Bitcoin futures will be one tenth the size of one Bitcoin and are aimed at providing a cost effective way to Bitcoin exposure. Clearly, they have a lot of demand for this product and they're making it available to much smaller investors. I think that this is great. Just to put some numbers behind what's going on in the futures market at the CME. This year so far, the CME has seen 13,800 Bitcoin futures contracts, equivalent to about 69,000 Bitcoin traded on average each day. The exchange also launched Ether futures last month. Not much happened with that one. A lot of people thought that would crash the market. And those have seen 767 contracts traded, equivalent to 38,400 Ether on average each day since the launch, said the CME. And finally, just a cautionary tale. An iPhone user blames Apple for 600k Bitcoin theft via fake app. Now, the Apple store is supposed to be vetted and secure, and there's not supposed to be any fake apps, but we all know that they do make their way in there. A guy downloaded an app that said Trezor, uh, apparently entered his private keys, and his wallet was quickly liquidated within seconds of about $600,000 in Bitcoin, this just reminds us never, ever, 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 ever give someone your private keys, ever. I don't understand why you would need a Trezor app, to be quite honest, because uh, I, I don't think you would want your hardware wallet in any way attached to your phone. But this really, really is a nightmare. And interestingly, I'm reading down in the article now, and they quoted me. I had no idea. But uh As Jameson Lopp said, stop entering seed phrases into software, only enter seeds into dedicated Bitcoin hardware devices. That is all the news and why I think Binance Coin is going to continue to skyrocket in the coming days, weeks, and months. I will be live at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today doing chart requests for my newsletter subscribers. You can subscribe to the newsletter down in the description and you can email me 
your chart requests in response to today's newsletter, which will go out in a few hours. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you guys at 2 p.m.